Hello viewers, welcome to my channel ITJ Olympiads and AP Physics with Ambarish. And uh, today I have brought this problem that featured in one of the All India Test Series uh, papers uh, of one of the coaching institutes. And uh, some of uh, the students, they were facing a problem in uh, solving this one. So I decided to take it up. So let me present to you the problem and then we will go into the explanation. So here is the problem. A solid object of height h having uniform density rho and varying cross sectional area which is circular is placed on a frictionless surface as shown in the figure. So here is some solid uh, it could be a tall shaft also and we want that it should be having the same stress everywhere. So why would we like to have a, a shaft with constant stress because uh, uh, it turns out that this is an optimal uh, uh, shaft if we want to use less material and we want to support more load. So that's why I mean this is a very relevant kind of shape. So here we want that at every cross section the stress should be same. Okay. Find the ratio of radii R1 to R2. This is R1 radius here and there is some R2 radius here. If it is known that the compressive stress remains same at every cross section. So we want that stress is everywhere same. Of course at the top surface there will be some load from outside. Okay, so on the top surface the, the stress is generated through some external uniform loading. So I hope the question is clear. So we need to find out the uh, ratio of the radii or maybe uh, a modified problem could be to find the exact curve that defines this shape. Okay, so if you want you can give it a try. I will get into my analysis right away. So let's see. Okay, so let's say uh, this is my x axis and this is my y axis. So what I am taking, I am taking uh, an element of thickness uh, dy at a depth of y, okay. And let's say this much weight is w, the amount of weight above uh, y is, uh, or you can say in uh, this much weight is, let us say, w. So what is the stress at this section? So if uh, this is x, so you can say that uh, stress is nothing but w upon pi x square, right? So what I can do now I can take this x square to the other side so we get x square sigma is equal to 1 by pi times w. Now you take the differential of the this equation on both sides. So if you take the differential of this this becomes sigma into 2x dx right and right side you get 1 by pi times dw. Actually if you want uh, you can uh, you could have directly written this equation. Uh, so let me tell you the physical significance of this equation. So dw is what dw is this additional weight right. So additional weight has to be uh, balanced by additional normal reaction from this place, right? So additional weight will be how much you know that additional uh, weight will be uh, this this is this base area will be pi x square and dy. So additional weight is pi x square dy into density of course and density into g, right? So pi x square dy into g that's the additional weight and additional weight has to be uh, supported by sigma times additional area because stress is constant but area has increased. So what will be the additional area? So additional area will be nothing but 2 pi x dx. You take the pi over here and the additional area is 2 pi x dx. That's a very familiar expression. So uh, that's the logic of this equation. So if you don't want to just uh, think in terms of mathematics taking the differential you could as well write dw is equal to sigma into 2 pi x dx. That is additional weight is sigma times additional area. That's the rationale of this equation right. And uh, dw can of course be written as pi x square dy because pi x square is the base area of this disk and dy is the thickness. So pi x square dy becomes the volume and you multiply it by density to get mass and g to get the weight. Okay. Now it's a simple differential equation. You separate the elements and now we can integrate to get the uh, profile of the curve. Okay. So now we can integrate this equation. Okay. Uh, you can see. Uh, this x square you take here so you will have 1 by x dx type of things so and this pi will cancel off with pi. So integrate this now. So when the radius is r1 your height y is 0 and when the radius is r2 the height is h let us say. So you see here uh, radius is r1 and y coordinate is 0 because I have taken the origin over here and here the height is h y coordinate is h and uh, this is r2. So in appropriate limits now we integrate. And what do we get after integration log of r2 by r1 is rho gh by 2 sigma. So r2 is r1 e to the power uh, rho gh by 2 sigma or we can say r1 by r2 is e to the power minus rho gh upon 2 sigma. So that was my analysis of the problem. I hope you enjoyed the analysis. 
and if you enjoyed the analysis please consider giving a thumbs up to my video and please share this video as much as possible with your friends through whatsapp telegram discord or whatever uh, social media or uh, networking media you use for uh, networking with your friends preparing for je or olympiads and most importantly if you are not already subscribed to my channel please do subscribe to my channel hit that subscribe button right away because that's what keeps me motivated to do new videos uh, uh, frequently thanks a lot for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one and as always god bless you all thank you